I come to this talk passionate about this sentence. Why has common sense been eliminated from our industry? You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Gary, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Matt, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. So uh, I'm gonna pontificate here for like 10 or 15 minutes, but what I really, really wanna do knowing the incredible pedigree of the audience and many, if not most of you, could equally and should be up here speaking. I, I really am passionate about Q&A and getting into the details because I'm gonna go macro here, which is what you have to do when you don't have the context of where everyone's angle is from sales to marketing. The incredible agency partners here are thinking about one thing, the brand teams are thinking about a different thing, the media team is thinking about another thing, uh, the talent that has been so incredible uh, in the content is thinking about another thing, but we're all bound by the same thing, which is attention, creativity, business results, uh, altruistic impact on society. And so please, 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 as I set this framework of how I see the world and what I'm seeing, please jump in and, and start firing away with however Matt taught you questions or asks, because I really want to get into details. Because I think, you know, for me, I, I love barbells. You know, I love the macro psychology and what's actually happening, the strategy, but I'm also extremely practical. I think one of the things that's been very hard for me in being in Madison Avenue is the creative industry, I think a lot of times struggles with, create, with, with practicality. A lot of times it's about the creative and I, I think a lot about the attention and the business and then the creative, I call it my ABCs. And I think a lot of times it's creative, creative, creative. And there's a tone def, definitely to business. Sometimes the media plan on the attention side is integrated with the creative, but they're siloed. And in that silo in the, in the middle, the B is, is kind of left to struggle. And that's why the sales teams and, and retail incentive mm -hmm. programs and all those things have emerged in leverage because I think of the lack of practicality of advertising over the last 50 years. But I think a good place to go is actually the topic of the moment. If you're watching what's going on with AMC and GameStop, um, you're seeing one of the most powerful institutions uh, over the last 100 years in commerce be put to its knees, Wall Street, right? You're, you're seeing hedge funds, which have completely dominated the ecosystem, uh, lose $5 billion in a week because a bunch of humans got together and, um, and made a decision. And there's really nothing stopping that. You can shut down a discord talking about Wall Street, but you're gonna have to regulate the internet to actually stop what's happening right now. Cause you can go into a forum or you can go into a Facebook group. Like what, what, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna just put every human in jail? Like, you know, what are we talking about? Going back to communism, you know? So I think that uh, we're living in an incredible time. And I think for everybody here, it's incredibly important to understand why that matters to us as communicators, marketers, business people. We talk a lot about owning our brand controlling the narrative. We spend ungodly amounts of time in boardrooms making subjective decisions. And no matter how incredible the talent is, Ricardo, Monica, Marcel, Pedro, I think about all the great people I've worked with through the years, Lucas, no matter how great the talent is, Miguel, of making the subjective call on the creative, this false narrative that we believe that we control the brand positioning that, we, that we're gonna tell the story, that we're gonna dictate it, is laughable. Go right now, and I mean it, like literally, where's mine? Go right now to your phone, go into Instagram, I'm gonna do it myself, and literally put in Bud Light, like search it. I'm searching right now on the spot, Bud Light. In real time, tags, all right, 1.8 million posts. Here we go, here it is. All this creative, has a hell of a lot more consumption than what Bud Light does on its social media channels by itself. So this narrative of spending 800 hours of global Stella and local Stella debating what gets posted on Instagram, when there's 800 posts that were posted for people to see and decide what they think of the brand being done while we were in boardrooms debating one post. And I just see Matt smiling. This is real talk, my friends. Listen, this is real talk. I quite busy, you are a great partner, but I come to this talk passionate about creative, passionate about business, but most of all, passionate about this sentence. 
why has common sense been eliminated from our industry? Like why can't, like in 38 seconds, I just described very logically and in real life, why ABI globally will waste 40, thousand hours debating creative on social media platforms, whether DraftLine does it or Vayner or Leo Burnett or global. And Do you know the global and local dynamics that happen in this company? The politics are unbearable on a good day. And I feel bad for the individuals. We need a strategy shift, right? It's always gonna come down to the work. I think Megan's speaking here who I'm obsessed with. You know, that work that we did together, you know, at, with Vayner and the Budweiser team, that work matters, right? That work really matters, what we did with NWSL. But, but how you get there, it's by listening. It's by being common sense oriented. The women's national team is like, the, like literally like the feeling I just felt of warmth is incredible. It doesn't make sense that we only care for two weeks every four years. Of course we should care about this, right? Of course we should keep playing. Like, of course it should have attention. But where does that come from? That comes from listening. When you do social properly, what an what a incredible situation that's brewing. Social media content is where brand is actually being built. It just is. And, and it's time that we finally accept it. Like brand is being built in the lower and middle funnel. There's far more consumption of Ultra and Stella and Budweiser happening on this phone today than on a TVC outside of Super Bowl which ironically some brands are, are and aren't doing this year. And I think the work that Budweiser is doing is very strategic because we've done it for so long, but we need to have a new conversation, my friends. Please let what you see going on with Bitcoin and sports cards and Wall Street and Discord and Clubhouse, like isn't everybody here tired of just being slow and non-culturally relevant? Like, isn't it just time for us to, like, isn't that what this meeting's about? Right? Isn't this meeting about let's take a step out? Because I do it too. I'm not sitting on a high horse. I get into my minutia too. But these meetings, correct me if I'm wrong later when Matt jumps in, Matt, these are times to step back and think. We're taking time out from working right now to consume. I think it's time we understand what's actually happening, why GameStop can go from almost going out of business to $300 a share. People, the internet, the pipes of the internet rule the day. Has the social discourse in America and around the world not taught you what's going on? Distribution has been disrupted, my friends. We can't run the same media playbook. And when you don't run the same media playbook, it changes the entire creative playbook. We have to score differently. We have to act differently. Please, it's just, it's over. Don Draper is fucking dead. He's really dead, like not even kind of dead. And, and we need to understand that. And the second we do as an organization, incredible things happen. The politics between global and local change because we become, and stick with me here, this is the word of the day. This is an and game creatively, not an or game. This, you know, Stella can be both super premium and affordable luxury, funny and serious. It should be relevant to as many people as, who does, does anybody here not want everybody to drink everything that we sell? Like, cause we decided in a boardroom who should buy Stella versus Bud Light. That's how we should communicate. They should both communicate to everybody. They're monster brands. We are making enormous common sense mistakes in the ecosystem. We completely have lost our way with where brand is being built. And we have to get back to the ABCs. It starts with attention. Business is the punchline. Then we can talk about creativity fitting into A and B. Let's get our ABCs down. This is simple. This is common sense. But corporate America, the global corporate world and Madison Avenue are not living in it. They're just not. And so, you know, I view our entire space the way I view Nissan versus Tesla, the way I view ABC network versus Netflix, the way I view Amazon selling toys versus Toys R Us. It's changed the way I view influencers over famous people. This company is gonna be thrilled to sign seven figure deals with famous people while there's influencers that are 10 times more famous <laughs> with our target audience that we could get for hundreds if not tens of thousands of dollars. We just need more cultural relevance. We need more speed. We need more empathy, not apathy. 
We need to be more consumer centric. We need to be faster, cultural relevant. We need to change our processes, the way we judge. We have to, we have to suffocate our own bullshit within ourselves. It is, it's time. It's 2021. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Don Draper is dead. All right. I have some <laughs> of my own questions of my own. First of all, I'm going to address the question that you had for me. Please. Look, like, and you've worked with us long enough. We're all about learning. And that's what this day is about. And we could have filled this with people only from Anheuser Busch or ABI or other Fortune 500 companies, and we did not. That's why you see the lineup that you do. Mm -hmm. um, so we appreciate the perspective, but that's what this is all about. Um, I just want, you know, look, I'll, the first question I have is I hear you, you know, Budweiser and Stella should be marketing to everybody, but how do you reconcile that with brand positioning and differentiation in the market? Um, I think it comes down to being culturally and contextually relevant to far more individual groups. The way you break through is you have everybody like you not you've decided you're going after coastal white males and then spend all your money going after that. That, it just actually doesn't make sense. It made sense when the cost of television distribution and the cost of television creative was expensive and that was your at bat and you had to go a certain route. But with the internet where we can go consumer centric up and, and really be relevant to so many more people, I think, I, I can't believe how much I still see people talk about reach and awareness when they talk about some of the biggest beverage brands in the history of mankind. We, like Budweiser does not have an awareness problem. Neither does Michelob Ultra for that matter. This is about really understanding how to create relevance through contextual creative to how it's being distributed. The separation of media and, and creative, Matt, destroyed the value of agencies to brands in my opinion. I really believe that because it made it hard for people to be accountable. I, I have empathy for the people that are on here that are just in creative. When they just control that part and they have to hand it to a media planner company that's separate from them, even if it's in the same holding company, they've got different bonuses, different cultures, it's different. It, it's really hurt us and I think the internet requires it. And so I think we'll see in the next decade it go, go back back together, but I think this, the, to answer the question, it's how do you get seven meaningful groups of individuals a million people in each, two million people in each, four million people in each, because you were so contextual to them. Monica is one of the great things in our partnership. Her incredible push around localization, let's do big boy in Atlanta, let's do this in Utah. It works, why? Because people in Atlanta like Outcast. go figure. Like it's not complicated. And we go way too much vanilla push down instead of basking Robins up. And so the way I see it is because I do believe that brand is being built in the digital platforms. How do we have seven to 12 meaningful groups of consumer bases? How do we then make very sharp with teeth in it creative for those groups, which then creates consideration and, 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 and connection. So I wanna follow that up because as you know, you mentioned Megan Rapino is about to join us and I think that's could be it, but give us an example that you did with AB that, that, that shows this type of thinking, this type of creativity. I'm obsessed with the work that we did with Megan and obsessed with the work that we did with Dwayne Wade, right? Those are monsters, yeah. but I'm, I kind of you know, subconsciously already went there. The localization work that Budweiser is doing with Monica and Marcel is something that I, on the record, is going to be replicated across ABI globally in five years because it will be proven to be historically true, which is contextual creative at scale. 68 of those executions for the price of one hardcore TVC. You know, if I'm launching Bud Light Seltzer all over again, I'm doing 113 Atlanta big boy Budweiser's, not TV by GRP, just get everybody to be aware because I can do it at six, I can do it 113 times and meaningfully to get the same overall awareness, I believe to be frank even more because of the way GRPs are scored and how quickly television viewership is vanishing, especially in commercial form. Now you've got incredible creative, I mean, ABI has anomaly, wide and incredible firepower, giving those individuals much more creative room than fit this in a 30 second film. Yeah. So that is by far my favorite work, Matt. I wanna follow up with a question. I think it was a good segue, but then 
Look, I know you're a creative team well. Shout out to Nick. But what are the principles of creativity that won't ever change? But what are the new rules that companies and agencies and brands need to be adopted? Creative is the variable of success. You know, when I do these things, when I go to Can, when I A and A, like a lot of creatives get upset with me. I read the comments and I'm like, no, 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 no. I gotta, I, and I put on myself, not on them. I'm like, I gotta do a better job communicating this. Like, I think I'm liberating creativity. I cannot believe that creative humans think a 30 second video and then matching luggage to the tagline and video in digital banner form is considered creative in 2021, Matt. I think this is, you know, so what is true? A good story, something that makes somebody cry, smile, think, is always gonna win. The new rules are, how do you stop someone that's going like this? Do you actually even understand the creative platforms and the nuances? Do you know what an Instagram you know, reel is versus a story? Do you understand how carousels work? Do you understand how to start a, a conversation about craft beer on Clubhouse? which becomes an awareness play? Do you understand pre-roll Spotify, you know, audio buying? Do you understand influencers, mid tail, long tail? Do you understand two minute, 37 second videos outperform, outperform business 30 second videos, even though Facebook and Google and Twitter will tell you make shorter videos on their best practices because it works for their metrics, but not for business results. Because if you make a great two minute, 37 second video that everybody watches, they're gonna buy your stuff, you know? so. I think the, the rule is a great story is a great story. The right tagline, the right emotion, the right moment. You can watch all nine or whatever seasons of Mad Men. It's all there. It's all right. That's all right. The problem is you used to have people watching them. So distribution matters. And you have way more flexibility now in the new game to do very different stuff. And that matters. I, so I don't know if you want to bring that home. We have a question that's on that note from Katie Ostreco. Thanks, Katie. What is the Thanks, biggest Katie. mistake? The biggest mistake you see brands make when they shift from traditional to digital strategies? A complete lack of understanding of context, creative, and how to really spend media because most go to digital and they just replicate TV DNA. They go for mass scale. So they buy you know, a $3 million Facebook ad, 21 to 35, hit enter against one piece of creative and they're like, why is this not working? because you're not actually using the tool properly. It's like taking a screwdriver and trying to hammer in a picture on your wall, use the tools properly. There is a stunning misunderstanding, Matt, of how to use these tools. Gymshark does $500 million in revenue on Instagram. Like, you know, Wish, the shopping app, does 8 billion on the back of Facebook. Like these numbers are real now. I, you know, bang energy drink, right? Like this is real now. Like I don't understand what people are talking about. Like liquid IV I was involved with, right? All the brand is being built. Like, but when you go from traditional to digital, you've had an entire ecosystem of traditionalists taking the same blueprint strategy and deploying it to digital, which has been a massive mistake, which is why digital doesn't work. Nothing works if you don't know how to use it. A basketball works for LeBron, Matt. He's gonna make billions because of it. A basketball doesn't work for me. I've torn both my meniscuses. Right, but, but a cell phone and social networks have worked for me and they haven't worked for an A-list actor when I started 15 years ago because now she or he's irrelevant because they were too snotty to play on this. So tools only work if you know how to use it. Most agencies and brands are not using digital properly. They go programmatic because they're going for lowest cost there's no conversation of creative and media together properly. Volume of creative, finding right versus pushing down and having audacity of right. There's a lot going on here, brother. Haley Caldwell asked, what do you think about the thought that if you were targeting to everyone, then you were targeting to no one? One more time, I apologize. What do you think about the thought that if you were targeting to everyone, then you were targeting to no one? Um, I think it's a really, really, really interesting point. Here's the difference. I think that that's actually what's happening with, you know, with creative today. I would argue what she said is right because when you're talking once and you're trying to talk to everybody, inherently, you can only be relevant to a small percentage of the people that you paid to get in front of. 
When you go with the volume model up against a bunch of cohorts, you're actually talking to 12 different people. For example, Matt and Haley, I, I, let's use you, Matt, because we can go back and forth. There's seven different Matts. There's Matt that ABI knows. Then there's Matt in his personal relationships. Then there's the Matt with his single best friend crew, whether that was high school, college, right? Yeah, they're watching. <laughs> right? Then there's, and, and they're all different. And, the, and in those bubbles, you talk differently. You actually talk differently. Different slang, different stories. So I think the, I actually think the statement and the question's right. I think television commercial, like modern, what's considered today, branding, is trying to talk to everybody, thus talking to nobody. I think what I'm talking about is 25 Megan videos, 67 Dwayne Wade videos. And as you can imagine, that Megan video is gonna speak to a whole lot of women, you know, across the spectrum of women and a whole lot of compassionate men and a whole lot of Americans who are like, yeah, we do love these girls only once. Ever. Like, that's crazy, that's bullshit. Like, and so that's one group. Guess what? The Dwayne Wade video talked to a whole nother group. Guess what? The, the big boy play for those Atlanta people, that talked to another group. So I think I'm trying to talk to everybody but talk to them in context. The way Matt talks to his buddies on a four day weekend in Vegas on a reunion versus when he comes back into the office Monday and there's a real different Matt in that boardroom. And that's exactly right. It's human, it's right. It's not, if Matt was talking the same way everywhere, he'd be fired, right? He'd probably have, you know, so he'd be super cool with his boys but everything else would burn down to the ground. Or if he talked the same way to everybody, he'd have a great career, but his boys would have dropped him a long time ago because they don't care about his PowerPoint presentation, right? So that's context is the game. He'd asked, we already know about TikTok. What is an untapped platform for brands? I think Clubhouse, TikTok, and LinkedIn are the three brands that I would play on. I, for example, Stella should get very serious about LinkedIn. Those are all three platforms that have gross, I mean, slang term for awesome, incredible gross, organic reach. You can make one post and pfft, TikTok's about to become age verified for alcohol. So I'm, I'm hopeful and I'll be a voice at the table of pushing this org there very quickly. Um, LinkedIn's organic reach is unbelievable. I would also argue that there are specific execution, face, Instagram reels, not IGTV, not regular in-feed posts, a huge play for the brands here. Um, Mid-tier influencers, starting our own podcast. I think Ultra should have three podcasts that talk about extreme you know, sports and escapism and basketball. So becoming a little bit more of a, much like Draftline is building a creative infrastructure internally, a publishing infrastructure internally is another untapped arena. Um, I think every single person that crafts a beer in our ecosystem should be hosting a Saturday and Friday night beer talk on Clubhouse. Let's get every charismatic, you know, brewmaster, and that's probably 25 to 40% of them because some are introverted and don't want to do it. And let's get them in there. Let's record it because that feature is now coming and you can do it if you just tell people you're doing it. Let's make content out of it. There's a lot of contemporary work, Matt, that can be done. Um, I don't want you to give a, an AB, well you can, maybe an AB example if you want, but non-AB. Which brand campaign from 2020 really hit the mark? I have no idea, and let me tell you why. When I look at, and I do it rarely, but when I look at the ad ages or the ad weeks or the things that the industry does, I always do the same thing. Is the business up? You know, why am I keep going down to big boy versus let's say Dwayne Wade? I like business results. So, you yeah. know, right? Chipotle might have done something cool and we, we all love the Nike commercial. It's a beautiful piece of craft. Did that move the model? Did that move the business? I think brand always does, but was Nike already there? Like how many more? Did it change people's opinion? You know, so to me, I, I never ever have a good answer for this, Matt, because there's A, my subjective opinions if something was funny, clever, good craft mischief. Yeah. That to me is a focus group of one and that's hypocrisy, that's not interesting. B, I really think that, we're, we're, listen, we're not talking about raising funds for a nonprofit or getting somebody voted for. We're sitting here and talking about business, every one of us right now. So to me, 
the purpose of marketing and branding is to drive business results. And so the ones that won are the ones that um, actually impacted the business. I like this question from Ali Burton. Ali, thanks for the question. Gary, hi. How do you think attention will shift five years from now? What should we be doing to get ahead of that? Ali, I'm not sure, right? Because I, you know, even though I've been yelling for a long time about voice, so in some way I did feel like I saw Clubhouse coming-ish. Um, uh, you really don't know. I'm not fun, I'm, it's not fun for me to think I am Nostradamus or I've had an incredibly good career of investing early about Bitcoin in 2014, all my social stuff, but I don't think I'm talented in predicting anything. I think what I'm very good at is adjusting to reality. You know, I think there's coaches that do a great job game planning and then they come to the game. I'm a different kind of coach. I game plan, but I'm not like up to three o'clock in the morning bleeding until the game. What I'm incredible at is watching the first half. My team's down 21 to six, but I've watched the first half. We go into halftime, I only got 15 minutes. My adjustments are gnarly. Like I think we go back out there and we win 28 to 24. And, and so that's my answer, Ali. I, I, I don't think anybody can actually predict. I think AR, VR, audio, all have incredible upside. Do I think that Alexa, send me a case of beer is gonna be real life? I do. Do I think that this company should figure out when they say beer that it's us, not our competitors? I do. You know, do I think that VR is coming and I see tens of thousands of people paying for subscriptions to wear their glasses and do things? I do. Do I think it'd be cool if we did beer tastings that way around the world? Beers around the world through VR in 17 years, 13 years? I do. But I don't know if it's 17, 13, two minutes, you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that to me, it's more about keeping your ear to the ground every second, whether that's knowing that the, the baby and Meg the Stallion and Charlie D'Amelio are about to pop or that clubhouse and, and, and Bitcoin are about to pop or sports cards, or if it means that, you know, a new platform that's just launched today has a shot. Um, that's what I do. I listen daily and day trade attention more than plan it. I got to get this in. Matthew Bull just wrote as a Jets fan, you must be used to your team being down at halftime. Thank you, Matthew. We'll see you later. And then um, and my friend- Hold on, uh, real quick, real quick, and I'll get to it. Matthew, yeah. the reason I'm so excited is my new head coach has the same haircut as you, my friend. And that, because I admire <laughs> you so much, I think that that is going to work out nicely. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Matthew Bulls here, one of my true favorite all-time creatives. Matthew's career is built on unbelievable creative ideation. I believe what I'm about to say. I believe if 24 year old Matthew was coming into this world, he would have had a 40 time bigger career because Matthew coming up his game had to be reliant on somebody else's subjective opinion. I am predicting that Matthew's 30 best ideas never saw the day of light. And if people listen to me in the first 15 minutes here, they would understand what it means is Matthew's ideas will come and see the day of life. And to me, that is game changing. And so as incredible Hall of Fame career as Matthew has had, I think he left some of his trophies on the field. And I hope that the next Matthews, and even Matthew, because he's still a young man, like if we understand that up in that way, there's going to be much better ideas to see the world. Nonetheless, I, I know you want to get one more in before we got out of here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try to get two more in. Okay. Um, my friend, Lara Krug from the Stella team. Gary, reflecting inward, what do you think is the best work, Vayner, your team did this year and why? What were you disappointed about or wished was done different and why? That's really, really good. I, my team did a very bad job in 2020 of finishing off the fight. We come in with very strong points of view and then we allow our clients to get us to a much safer, boring, corporate place based on politics and subjectivity and our account team, creatives and strategists have been hearing from me this year of like, listen, we get paid to think. We have the right thinking. I really know we do because I'm looking at everything outside of Madison Avenue. Don't fold like a cheap chair when you get pushed back on. So very disappointed how often we were willing to go back three steps, which then took the juice out of an A execution and made it a B minus or C plus which then just doesn't hit the radar. Our best work, 
Scott's, I think Scott, you know, I don't know if some of you saw this, but Scott's just awarded Vayner its entire full funnel creative and media, 1960 Leo Burnett. Full media AOR, full creative, not just social, not just digital, above the line, the whole throttle. Why? We were able to get in there in the digital way and, and the ABI team knows, I want, and Pedro, if he's listening, knows, I want Vayner to do creative and media together and social so that we can do what we're, Scott's, P&G, Pepsi, they're all going in the same direction because we have both together, we're able to show brand building and sales results and, but Scott's was just insane. What we were able to do October to February before COVID, changed their culture, drove business in off season, and more importantly, had them credibly prepared for COVID, which was a natural spike of their business with backyards, all of which has led to them doing their first Super Bowl spot this year that you'll all see it. I hope you enjoy it. And wait till you see the wrinkle we put in there. Another 2021 example. I can't wait to get your feedback. Look, I think, I think we're up to something. I really do. And, and I'm really proud of that work. And it, and it led to a relationship that is extremely unusual in, uh, in today's modern world. All right, I'm gonna have one more question from the chat and I'm gonna end with a question for me. This uh, one comes from Shelby. You mentioned internet regulation. Do you feel like this is finally coming? It's been a conversation for over 15 years, but now that it is infiltrating the stock market, do you think the movement will gain momentum? I do, and I think it's gonna be sad because I think, let me rephrase. I don't think it's gonna be sad. I think it has momentum. I think it's, I think there's so much good from it that people don't understand and that, regular, and that we're not focusing on right now. So much happiness, so much escapism, so much ben, best friendship. We're so focused on the negativity and now the disruption that I think that's the one, two punch that may get us there. I think it would, I think it's, I, I think it's a scary slope. Regulated internet, I just wanna remind everybody, regulated internet is fine and dandy when the people in control see the world the way you do. It's not as interesting when they don't. And so there's a reason that Iran, Russia and China are the companies, company, funny, the countries that have regulated internet. There's a reason, just wanna remind everybody, if we believe in freedom, this is real freedom, it's just, Real freedom changes the rules, just like America was built on from London rule. It's gonna be a very philosophical thing, but I do think it's gaining momentum, which is too bad, because I think it's gonna have a lot more secondary collateral negatives than people are anticipating. Right now, they just don't like the negativity and they don't like the unstableness. But sometimes that's the best thing, because it's leading you to your next place. And your question, Matt? Last question. Today's all about creativity, celebrating it. Whether it's somebody starting out in their career, or somebody who's been at it for 20 years, what advice do you have on gaining inspiration and staying ahead and, and sort of having a force of creativity in the work you do? Fight for yes and and. Fight for yes and and. Demonize no and or, and watch your creative world change upside down. I'm back to the people like Matthew and others. I've been in the wine business, I've been in Silicon Valley, it's unbelievable how much I love the humans in this industry. When I go to, one of the reasons I miss Can is like, we may compete in the micro, micro, micro with an anomaly or a widen or a media com or a droga, but like, or, you know, a mind share. But in real life, this is all, the humans are just incredible, right? And I know I'm a lightning rod to some and I'll get the hisses and what have you. But when I sit down and have a glass of rosé, some of the nicest, wonderful, best people I love have come, are in this industry. On the flip side, and remember what I'm about to say, I was in the wine business and Silicon Valley. This industry has a lot of undertone resentment and negative things. And I think the reason it does is the business is built on or and no. And I think the freedom creatively of understanding what I'm saying about brand building in the mid and lower funnel, where everything's a yes and, is liberating to the artists that are incredible in this industry. And I wish more people understood it. I think, I'm, I think history will look at me as a great champion of creativity, even though I care about business results. I care about the craft. I just care about ideas the most. And I know that people, consider quality in many different ways. It doesn't need a red camera. Sometimes it's the cleverness of the wordsmithing. Sometimes it's knowing how to use an animated GIF or an emoji at the right moment. And I just wish people got that because when you go to yes and, 
when you understand brand is built in the lower and middle funnel in 2021, you can make 87 commercials instead of one. And you can actually tell the full story instead of having to chop it to 30. Cause you know in your heart, so all my wonderful creatives here, that that story was meant to be told in a minute and 19. And when that distribution's changed and it has, I mean, what's gonna be left of commercials? Are you kidding me with OTT? So this could be to inspire you, figure this world out because it's actually the liberator of your happiness and creativity. All right, sorry, I have to get this in because you referenced her a few times. Monica Ruski, VP Marketing and Budweiser, for those who don't know. Gary, creativity, overrated or underrated? <laughs> Mon, thanks for watching that show. By the way, for everybody who's watching, if you go to my Instagram, Gary V E E, please check this out. Back to what I believe in. I started it randomly, I had an idea. I, my algorithm on Instagram matters a lot, I care. But I'm like, no, no, creativity is underrated. I'm gonna be creative, I'm gonna start the show overrated, underrated, and now it's the most important thing I'm doing on my, on my, I mean, nobody would think a four minute IGTV would outperform all these best practice, but it's the content, baby. Creativity is underrated. It is absolutely the variable of success. What is overrated is how we get to the creative in the ad and corporate world. And when I say overrated, it's obnoxious. And that is what we need to fight for. And the people that are holding it up don't realize that they'll do even better in the opening up of it because they're inherently talented and creative. All right, Gary, thank you. That was amazing. Uh, you're a great partner. You and your team you. do amazing work for us. We really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Hit me up on LinkedIn or on Twitter, Gary VE, and give me some feedback or insights. I, I'm really taking advantage of COVID and connecting with people on LinkedIn. If I could be a help to any of you, even, even the competitors, you need some talent. I got a bunch of people that want to try new things. So karma, karma, karma forever. Love you. Thank you Thanks, so man. much. YouTube watcher, what's up? It's Gary Vee. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.